Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Flywheel Xbox 65, a micro golden racing quadcopter that sports up a lot of bling. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, and head outdoors and test it out. The Flywheel Xbox 65 is available in two versions. I've got the version that comes with the Runcom Split 3 Nano HD slash FED camera that will enable you to record 1080p 60 frames per second HD footage to its onboard DVR, and you can also get a version that comes with the Runcom Nano 2, which is a standard nano-sized FED camera. In addition, you can also get a bigger version of the Xbox 65, the Xbox 3, which as implied by its name, support 3-inch propellers, has a larger wheelbase, and instead of using 1103 motors, is using the Robo RB1202.5 motors, which I've recently bench tested. The packaging of the Xbox 65 is pretty minimalistic, and inside its box, along with the Xbox 65, which is pre-assembled and ready to fly, you can find a short user manual that shows you how to set it up, a 12cm long, high quality battery velcro strap, which is a little bit too long in my opinion, and two sets of Genfen 65mm by bladed propellers. In terms of components, the Xbox 65 is using the Fly Moonin 1103 7650 kV motors, which can handle up to 3S LiPo batteries, an electroplated golden Truex frame, which gives it its unique look. On the center, you can find the Flywheel Goku FO11 16x16mm mini stack, which is based on a 13A BLLES 4-in-1 ESC, an F4 flight controller, and the VTX 625, which supports 48 channels, features IRC tram protocol, and has a selectable output strength of 25, 50, 100, 200, and 450 milliwatts. Both versions of the Xbox 65 and the Xbox 3 micro quadcopters are bundled with the Sky XM Plus receiver, which is mounted inside its 3D printed TPU part, and over here you can find its bind button, so you can easily access it. On the sides you can find the antennas of the XM Plus receiver, and as you can see, they are very nicely mounted. In addition, on the top you can find the nano-sized FEB camera, and the DVR board of the Runcom Split 3 Nano HD slash FEB camera, is located on the bottom of the quadcopter. Without a battery, the Xbox 65 weighs 111 grams. I've tested it with the GNB 520 mAh 2S and 3S LHV batteries, and including the 2S battery, the Xbox 65 weighs 155.4 grams, and including the 3S version, it weighs 175.7 grams. The wheelbase of the frame of the Xbox 65 is 104.3 mm. It features a true X pattern, so the distance between the back and front motors, and also between the right and left motors, is 72.6 mm. The thickness of the bottom unibody plate is 2.5 mm. The width of the arms is 6 mm. The thickness of the top plate, and also the side plates that protect and secure the FEB camera, is 1.5 mm. And in case you wonder, from bottom to top, the total height of this quadcopter is 61.3 mm. In order to bind the Sky XM Plus receiver to your remote controller, first I recommend to remove the propellers. Then power up the quadcopter while pressing the bind button of the Sky XM Plus receiver, which is located over here. As you can see, this LED is now solid, which indicates that the receiver is in binding mode, and after hitting the bind button on your remote controller when it is set to D16 mode, the LED is going to start flashing, which indicates that the bind procedure was successful. Now you need to connect the flight controller to your computer using the micro USB connector which is located on the back. Open up beta flight, hit connect, and make sure that all the sticks are working properly. By default, the RSSI channel is not going to be selected, and since this FRSky XM Plus receiver broadcasts the telemetry on auxiliary 12, you can simply select auxiliary 12, hit save, and the RSSI information is going to be displayed on the OSD, in case you're going to select the RSSI element. Now head over to the modes tab, define your favorite modes, and also define your favorite elements which are going to be displayed on the on-screen display. The Flywheel FO11 flight controller is pre-flashed with Betaflight 4.1.0. Its VTX table is predefined, so over here you can define your favorite band and channel, select the output strength, and I also recommend to set the low power disarm to on until first arm, which means that even though you're going to set the power to the maximum output strength, for example, it's going to be set to 25mW until the first time you're going to arm your quadcopter. 
In addition, under the configuration tab, I recommend to enable the RX lost and RX set switches. So in case you are going to lose radio connectivity, the motors are going to start to beep and you can also control the motors beeping by an auxiliary switch. Then don't forget to hit save and reboot and you're pretty much ready to go. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Xbox 65 using two and 3S GNB 520mAh LHV batteries. Using these batteries, you can expect a flight time of about 3 minutes. On both, the quadcopter felt pretty agile. However, if you want to get the most out of the Xbox 65 in terms of performance, you should definitely opt in for the 3S version. After testing out the Xbox 65, I can tell you that despite its weird design, which I'm not really sure how well it's going to survive crashes, it does fly pretty well, but it suffers from a couple of flaws. First of all, the microSD card slot is not well protected. And since the DVR board of the Runcom Split 3 Nano HD camera is located on the bottom of the quadcopter, in case of a crash, the microSD card is very likely to be ejected. Second of all, I think that the camera lens could use more protection. And finally, and most important, the HD footage suffers from a lot of jello. Out of the box, the side plates of the camera weren't properly secured, so I did try securing the side plates using UV glue, which seems to help, but the jello is still there. And I recommend that if you already have this quadcopter, try soft mounting the camera using rubber o rings, and maybe the jello is going to be reduced. So, overall, if you consider getting this quadcopter, I recommend to either go with the non HD version, since the jello is not noticeable in your FAV feed, or go with the 3 inch version, which seems to perform better in other reviews that I've seen. I'm going to wrap up this review with some flight footage, and as always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.